Thank you for joining Handle Your Business with Bobby Dino. I am joined by the great and powerful Ed Lattimore. Ed, thank you for coming <laughs> on today, man. Hey, no problem, man. Thank you for having me. Such uh, such colorful adjectives, man. I'm just a regular guy. No, I mean, I know you probably feel as such growing up how you did and, and li living your own life experiences like everybody else, you know, has that's relative. But for those who may not know, who is Ed Lattimore? Uh, you know, right now, I guess I'm, I'm a guy who's writing and growing and learning the whole internet business thing. Uh, in, in past lives, I've, I've been a physics student. I graduated with a degree in physics. I went back to school for that. Uh, professional boxer, 13-1 uh, and one in the heavyweights, and then I was an amateur boxer as well. I served in the United States Army. Uh, I grew up in the hood, man, you know, that kind of thing. And really just just wanted to I wrote I guess I wrote two books, two 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 pretty solid books that are well received. One of one I'm very proud of, the one about uh sobriety and a lot of the messages and reviews I get just just you know, it's funny, that's not the one that sells the best, but that is the one that I'm like super just everyone reads it and when when people find it, they find it because they need it. And then yeah. they read it and then they write back to me and they go, dude, this changed me. This helped me out. You know, thank you for being so open with, with things. So, yeah, I guess that's the other thing. Uh, on December 23rd, so we're looking at what is the seventh or eighth now. So and I'm in two weeks. I'll be uh, six years sober. And that's, well, that's been great. Uh, thanks, man. I'm, I'm no yeah. interest in going back uh, because, yeah. cause, you know, it's funny looking around the house. Sometimes, you know, you can let yourself think like, OK, it's been a while. Maybe I maybe I can think about it, I could try it. Like, like and I wouldn't try it because of kind of what I've become in terms of a symbol and how I've presented and written things. But I think about it. And mm -hmm. then I look at how I consume coffee. Or like if there's some sweet like I don't have sweets in the house because I don't I mean I don't have a sweet tooth, but like I'll just go through cookies and shit. It's bad. So I just yeah. I, I I realize that there is something about me that, that does not feel comfortable sitting in moderation so it's better that like i just lean in the stuff or link or, or don't touch it at all uh so so yeah that's that's pretty much who i am in a nutshell I'm just sure an average I'm guy for getting, yeah yeah, just, just <laughs> just regular regular guy. Guy. yeah, yeah, yeah. sure no you know you, you you mentioned uh growing up in the hood and you know obviously you, you probably you went through some stuff there i i mean i didn't grow up in a hood, so to speak, but I was kind of surrounded by hoods, if that makes sense. But yeah. you're, you're, you, you actually uh, had to grow up in a certain way. So maybe you can kind of fill people in on what was your childhood like and, and how did it kind of help form you into the man you are today? Uh, you know, the, the, the biggest thing I remember if I was like characterize my, my childhood is, is like low level level constant uh, worry, maybe anxiety. And then because of who I am and how I guess I'm built and designed, I really learned how to function with this background like noise. I probably got like some kind of form of PTSD mm -hmm. from it. Who knows, right? But right. it keeps you constantly vigilant about things and makes you very aware of of how people are moving and working together and what they're thinking and what you're doing. And, and, and you know, like, like I can't, a, a lot of what, like your demeanor when you talk about things, it, one of the reasons why I resonate with a lot of uh, things you put out and just your, your demeanor is I can tell, even if I didn't, if I, if I didn't know anything about like your background, if I had met you in person once or mm -hmm. twice, I could tell you've been in an environment where it's really useful to, to lead with respect and politeness and then just see how everything is kind of moving in the mm -hmm. background. Because just because you're the nice one, it doesn't guarantee anything. What it does right. is, is it, is, I guess, is, is, is it establishes uh, culpability. It establishes like, okay, I came in this, you know, with the best of intentions and right. you were just trying to be an a-hole. So now we right. got. So now I got to be an a hole times ten 
to let you know and everyone else know that I'm right. really it's really better to do it with a nicer version. So uh yeah, that that really and you know what's funny about how that oh. shapes you know, dealing with, a, with with your adulthood and everything. I am like like people really think I'm a nice guy. And I'm just like, I don't know how you could think that. And then I remember I spent uh so much time being me and learning how to establish boundaries that I, I never let someone or, or very rarely let someone get to the point where I need to push back and be like, right. you month, you know, right. But right, because right, right, right. one of the things you learn how to do, right. It's a, it's a really, uh, it's a hard school, but it's the kind of school you can't enroll in. You just got to kind of get put there. Right. Is you learn how to have boundaries while being polite. And I think a lot of people lean one way or the other. They're either doormats Right. Or they're they're hard asses that no one likes, and it's like uh you know it, it takes it, it it takes a certain kind of intentionality, but once you get it, you can kind of sit there and it makes everyone around you more comfortable. So yeah, I mean, I, I really I talk about this a lot that I got a lot of good out of it, but I think part of that is luck. Like I I can't control it. You know, I, I've got mm-hmm. I've got freaking I've taken that MBTI test a few times, but I've I've got like weird levels of low like weirdly low levels of neuroticism uh been been evaluated several times and and that really probably helped but the other thing is you know being intelligent you can see and kind of figure things out but intelligence helps a lot yeah but not being so intelligent you can't relate because if you can't relate you're gonna get your ass kicked a bunch of times right uh right that that did not i can't even say obviously but you know that did not happen to me but right a lot of it, it's just a lot of stuff that comes together, a lot of luck. But there's also, I mean, you know, they, after a while, you got to decide, man. Are you, are you trying to leave this place in one piece? Or are you trying <laughs> to be about this place? I, th- I think you said something about this or said something to the effect of, like, you know, you get guys, uh, when they when they come in, some of them just want to do their time and go home. And mm-hmm. and it's gonna I mean it's still the, the environment, but it's but if that's your intent, you're gonna make certain decisions that's gonna keep you out of the shit. Now, if you if you're coming in to raise hell, join the gang, and be crazy, I would imagine that's there for you too. Um, mm-hmm. And and if you want to take full, if you, you want to take advantage, it's weird to even use that phrase. But if you want to take advantage uh, of that, it's there for you too. And, and the hood was no different. Yeah, you know what I say, or, or what I've said, because you know that I talk about situational awareness and the like, and I've said that people that come from the hood, they get that situational awareness deal down early in life. And I'm talking yeah. about like when they're kids, <laughs> like they like it's, they ain't even adults yet, you know, and like they, they may not even know what their like their multiplication tables are, but they know how to watch their back already. But, but they know if somebody is yeah. looking to look on this, you know, like, like, like it's funny. Uh, we're here in Europe right now. My girlfriend's always like, watch out for the pickpockets. Watch out for the pickpockets. <laughs> and we, we got in the crowd at Metro the other day, and there was a sign about the pickpockets. And I'm sitting here like, like, and, and I'm sure the part of this is just me being the naive American. But the other part right. is like, first off, why the hell would I even have my wallet in my back pocket to begin with? And mm-hmm. then if you like, and and, and if you're gonna take my wallet from my pocket, we, I'm a, I'm gonna know. I'm right. gonna make sure I know. And then we'll, and then when I catch you, I wanna make an example yeah. out of you. Not not that right. crazy. So, but, but but it's one of those things. Where I'm like, how do people get like? Cause because you you know you can see a hustle, like you know a hustle. <laughs> you know, come on. Up. But and a lot of like, people don't. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Like that situational awareness, they're just blind to it. Like a lot of people like they just don't see it like i've been with people to where we'll be and to the point to where because i have friends that know that you know my hyper vigilance and and always being looking out is a good thing and then i'll have people that maybe don't know and they're just like oh this dude's paranoid or oh this dude's you know whichever right (laughs) right yeah and then and, and it's like all i've been with people to where i've just straight pointed stuff out like hey you didn't see this dude looking at you behind this wall right here, did you, you know, or like whichever to where they're just like, oh, what, you know? And and it's just like, people are blind to, to it sometimes, and, man. And that's and, what makes it so easy for criminals. <laughs> right. And, and not only that, but like, 
your body language is huge. One of the things I learned real early on was you do not look like you're lost. You just don't do it. Right. I mean, and because part of it is just a certain familiarity. It's like, okay, mm-hmm. after, you, after you've been in one hood, maybe two, you know, <laughs> you, you kind of know the protocol. Yeah, and yeah. yeah. Move around. <laughs> but, it, but, but that kind of uh, awareness works when you're just out on the street. You know, like, like I used to, I, I used to have a job. I worked at a Starbucks mm-hmm. when I was uh, 21. 2021 but at this sure. point way way out the hood right um okay. but i had to walk to work and and starbucks opens at like freaking five in yeah. the morning and i was walking because i didn't have a car and i was far point is i'm walking man through a relatively rough not super rough relatively rough area like three in the morning every day right and and there's two ways you can do it you can mm-hmm. you, you can do it without your headphones on, with your with your head up high, walking around and and, and kind of moving at a pace, not too swift, but not like mm-hmm. you're chilling and lost. Yeah. Or you you can have your headphones in, you be down, out, blah blah blah. You know, you, you people don't realize what makes them look like a target, and it's, it's right. insane. Uh, like like the 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 word, some guy came with me one time. The only time something happened, some guy came with me. I was like, "Hey man, uh, can you loan me some money?" And I said, "Or give me some money." You know, he's begging. He didn't. He wasn't being yeah. forceful because dude was like, right. like five ten. I think he was just trying to try and bitch me or whatever, just trying to see where I was at. And I was yeah. like, "Nah, man, I got." He was like, "Well, what if I walk with you to the ATM?" I was like, "Nah, fam, that's not, that's not gonna work." And I, I yeah. looked at him, and, and and I could tell based on my response to that was the next move whether we was going to the ATM. Right. <laughs> or, or we weren't going to right. the ATM, but right, right. I, I had a feeling that if we were, you know, it wasn't going to be my choice. Those kind of things just come together, and it's not just about being a big dude, man. Big guys get punked all the time. It's yeah. It's whether you you have established some kind of boundary, right? Just just mm-hmm. a, a sense of respect. How, you carry yourself are you aware do you look like an easy target do you look like yeah i shook this guy's hand does this guy feel like he can throw some weight around or is he or is he yeah. just you know does he have paper muscles as they say right right all those things come together and what, what we're doing what we're doing is we, we are we're still animals man we're like we, we're still yeah. animals oh, totally <laughs> totally <laughs> Totally. If you watch animal interactions with, with certain, yeah, to, we, we display the same kind of attitude and action and, and reaction. Uh, definitely. I think with, with setting boundaries, a lot of that too is because when you're coming up, man, I didn't even think we were going to dig this deep into this subject, but oh, why no, not? Dude, you know? Here we are. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But, but because, because you're, you're coming up in a certain way, you know, how you're supposed to be be to others. Traversely, yes. traversely, you know how others are supposed to be to you. So the boundaries being set is like, dude just crossed the line. He shouldn't have said that. Dude just did this. He shouldn't have done that. Dude just did that. So once those little markers start going off, right. then it's up to you whether you're going to call them on it. Because a lot of the times, that's what just people, people um, in society are so trained to be just so soft and meek that they'll just get punked and punked right. and punked and punked and like they'll just oh, okay to where when somebody said something you go hey bro no nah, man what, what are you talking about right now you know and you just like straight up call them on her like hey man you're not supposed to be doing this what's up man how, how, why are you getting at me foul like that and it it'll make it's like you said it instantly sets that thing to where it's like all right What's going to happen next is either this or this. Right. You know what we, I mean? Like, and, and so like, many of these kids today, man, like have grown up with in the, the uh, passive aggression is is, the, is so weird mm-hmm. to me because uh, there was no like like it's one of those things because, because I don't I mean I didn't go to this this part of my background but like when I when I turned fourteen right. I got to go to a different high school across town and that that experience easily changed my life for the better. I have no idea of what would have happened yeah. if I had to do another four years for that environment. Uh, but this was good. But I, I had to adjust to polite society. 
<laughs> I remember, yeah. I remember, I remember thinking it was weird that none of the kids had ever been in a fight before, and I was like, "You, you never fought before? What is weird, right?" Yeah. Well, but one of the things, but but another thing I had to get used to was this whole concept of passive aggression, and yeah. and once I realized what it was, it didn't happen instantly. I'm not, I don't want to like make it out mm-hmm. like I'm some kind of like super thug, right? Like, no, no, no. Right, right, right. But once I once I realized what passive aggression was, which was deferring the active engagement uh, or the, the, the level of engagement or to the other person so they can make right. a decision and then you could act like nothing happened, I realized right then and there, uh, you, you've got to check that behavior to the point of, mm-hmm. of, you know, someone going, oh, bro, we were just playing. Like, nah, man, we don't yep. play that way, pretty much. Yep. Like, right. right. And, and yes. it's got to continue. And then to eventually someone, you, you, someone says something, you look at them like, all right, man, you serious? Are you? And you just ask, yeah. you know, it gets to the yeah. point where, you you know, you don't entertain a lot of nonsense, but some nonsense you have to, because if you don't, depending on the circumstance, they they're not here here's how devious humans are man this is just how we are we're animals right they're not right. even thinking all right I, I i put that little filler out now i know what he's about no it's just it's just a, a natural kind of we sniff our weakness from other members of our species and so if, right. if, if i let somebody say something slide of me some mm-hmm. some off color and then right and everyone's oh man you should be bigger than that well, well you're right a lot of times it's not worth the response some things are. You got to decide yeah. where that line is for you. And once you hear somebody trying to cross it, like, like you are with your girl or something, some, some guy says a thing, one of your homies yeah. says a thing, and you got to decide, okay, is he is he trying to say one thing or another? But once you make that decision, and it can't mm-hmm. be made out of fear, but, but it's get, your response it has to be a clear response. Like, like passive right. aggression is, is ruining Forget ruining. I mean, every, everyone's looking for an easy way out, right? And past regression and sarcasm, and I think that's I've, – I've, I've said it a lot on Twitter about how much I can't stand uh, sarcasm as a form of communication. As, as a form of humor, it's, it's – you know, it is what it is. It's funny. Yeah, right. But, but it's communication, and I, and I figured out what it was because it's forcing the other person to decide what you meant. And if they decide right. that you were being an asshole – then it gives you an out to be like, no, nah, man, we were just joking. Or it's just, sorry, we were just playing. Right. Like, no, no, no. Like, like it, it's a very weak way to, to be aggressive. It is, it's weird. It's passive no, it's, aggressive. It's, That's exactly it's a total it bitch. It, it's like, the, it's the bitch move. And, and in California, especially Northern California, I've found, like, passive aggressive is just how people operate. Like, it's just very, like, you know, um, even with their driving, with their, with, with any which way oh did we lose you again ed you there oh okay sorry i'm here oh, okay yeah no <laughs> no i i heard it i heard a click in my thing and went oh no um it's a very uh it's just like you're saying it's to where you call out and not only when you call them out are they deferring that decision so to speak but it also lets them play the victim card too yeah. like Oh, oh, what do you mean, bro? Oh, you know, like, nah, man. And oh, why is he getting so mad at me? Oh, what's up? Exactly. And, right. And and so, and my thing is, is I've had people tell me I was being aggressive, you know, like in communications, you know, like, oh, you're aggressive. Hey, I would much rather be aggressive to where you know plainly what I'm telling you than do some passive aggressive behind the whatever, do doing cartwheel shit uh, to where you're trying to defer some type of, like you said, decision or whatever into my lap. Yeah, and you know, a lot of it too is people trying to get the benefits uh, of of being cool with you without having to answer to the standard of it, you know, because, because you know, if, if I call you out on something but we was cool and, you know, for whatever reason, maybe I gave you a rod or whatever and you, you didn't like something and you gave a passive-aggressive a response well you know i'm you know we we might go at it and then the, i decide we we not rocking together anymore whatever right right but if we do it this way if you used to go no nah, man i was what were you getting so aggressive for you like no 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 like and and dude and that's one thing you right. know it's funny <laughs> well what yeah. i mean well, one thing i seen a lot growing up that that really put that sour taste in my mouth for passive aggression passive aggression when i finally uh did 
see it because there was no passive aggression. It was the other way around in the hood. It'd be like, like, what do you, you ever yeah. hear, hear that joke? What do you mean, you people? Like, tons of, yeah, yeah. tons of stuff like that. Ever, fights started off for the most. So you had to be so careful and so direct. Mm-hmm. Because, like, you couldn't be passive. There was, there was, there was a lot of aggression. Well, not mm-hmm. really passive. Uh, so seeing that uh, is is very it's very unsettling to me. It's uncomfortable, yeah. and I, I can't I can't deal with that. And, I, and that's one of the cool things uh, about about auto switching gears just a little bit. It's one of the real cool things about what what Twitter is doing, connecting a lot of guys because one way or another. Are these guys have come up, the ones that, that stick and bond and get together, certainly the ones I vibe with and I co-sign with, uh, they'll, they'll, it's, a, it's a direct form of communication. It's very much, all right, here's yeah. a problem. And, and right. on top of that, I think if you, if you value yourself, you have to think about, because I know I'm, I'm the guy that talks about not caring what other people think, and that's, that's a blanket statement. I'll be the first to admit that. Right, right, on right. The other end, man, Social pressure is a very powerful thing because look, I have if if I have a problem with somebody business wise, right, that I'm dealing with on the internet, mm-hmm. and and I decide to be all passive with them and I don't sit down and discuss it directly, then then the reputations won't get around, and then no one's gonna want to deal with me. It's gonna be very hard, or rather, it's gonna be very hard to deal with me. I'd rather I'd rather them think I was over aggressive than have them think right. that I wasn't clear. I was trying to trying to you know backdoor you know pull a slime over something like that. Yeah, I'm I'm much I, I'm much uh, I prefer the the plain and direct. So so my my two favorite authors. There's a guy named Elmore Leonard. I don't know if you ever heard of him, but he wrote. Oh, like, that Get sounds Short. familiar. Yeah, he wrote Get Shorty. Um, oh no, you know kidding. Jackie, you know Jackie Brown, that Quentin Tarantino yeah. movie. That was an Elmore Leonard book. Uh, wrote a lot of these like cool kind of swat and and he wrote very much in the style of my other favorite author which is Hemingway and and one of the things that I always liked about them is they were able to put you in the moment but it was it was brevity and I and I appreciate that I appreciate the plain speaking versus the you have to do mental cartwheels to understand what you're trying to say you know And, and I and I think that that on an average, most people prefer that as well, whether whether they realize it or not. Yeah, Simplicity I mean, if you're gonna... is a burden. <laughs> yeah. Well, you, yeah, you, huh. you got to be strong to be simple and clear. You know, they think about yeah. that when when you hear somebody trying to trying to bullshit and talk their way out of something. It's a lot of extra words instead of just being straight up. Yo, we did this, right? We did that, and that right. was it, right? You know, right. there used to be comedians used to make jokes about this comparing masculine and feminine ways of communication. I remember Chris Rock made a joke. He's like, you ask a guy how his day was. He goes, yeah, man, we we'll, we'll rolled up in there. Tony said something. I think it was Chappelle. He was like, uh, we, we yeah. was at a dice game. Tony said this. I said that. And then, bam, went up and sat us able with a bottle. That was it. And we out, the cops came. And then you ask one, she's like, well, you know, first of all, you got to understand that I don't really like her, but, but, you know, she was being a bitch to me that day, so we was already set tone, and then the customers <laughs> were coming in. And then it's all this other stuff or the, the circle around to, to, to focus on the feeling of the story, and the guys was like, right. here's what happened, in, out, boom. And and right. that kind of communication is is preferable. For not only preferable, I really think it's the only way to get things done. In fact, here's a little side story for you. Uh, I don't. I don't know if you're familiar. I, I can't even remember. Where I read this. I feel like it was Freakonomics, but that's probably just me putting a blanket statement on those kind of books. Uh, but okay. I guess, I, first of all, airline travel is super. You're a pilot. I mean, even if you weren't a pilot, planes just don't crash. Commercial jets, man. Like it doesn't happen. Millions yeah. take off, whatever. But I guess sometime in the '90s, there was a bunch of crashes that were happening all out of Korea. And they couldn't figure out what was wrong until they looked at the way the Korean language was structured. And and part of how it's structured, you're not allowed to directly communicate to your superior. Uh, there's a, a whole different kind of language. Or, or and, and a lot of the Asian languages have this honorific language versus uh, common right. versus, you know, colloquial. And so they were, so, so the... Uh, the, the assistant pilot would see something and couldn't give a direct, a 
recommendation uh, to the pilot because of the level, and so they had to like speak around it. And by the time there was a, a solution made, came to they crashed. Well, th- but this is why everyone speaks English because <laughs> um, right. that, that that's one of the changes that was, that was made. It was like, you know now now they all got to know that language and and or at least the communication uh, it happens in that way. I'll have to remember where that where that story is. I'm sure someone right. who hears it will know it and then comment it. But I, I think I've actually heard something similar. Uh, about that, that that there's there, um, I, I've heard the honorific, like you said. Uh, I yeah. think I've heard I've heard a similar su- some type of similar comparison to where there was, and it had to do with planes. I, I think I'm out of, I, I may have read that too, but I'm not sure. But it just sounded familiar when you were talking about it. Yeah, I'll and have that's to Google that later. <laughs> and that's something you know for for you guys that are watching too. You're hearing Ed and I say this, and and we kind of have a uh, similar similar backgrounds and experiences from, from our youth to where uh, directness and, and manners and courtesy, all that stuff is needed. And it's not, if you're going to want people to do business with you or to, or to, you know, rock with you or whatever later on in life, you got to have that stuff because nobody's going to want to be around you if you don't. That's just, it's the way it is. So if you're a young and the man, people that do want to be around you, you're not gonna want to be around them. <laughs> man, I, yes. I I can't tell you. There is no worse feeling. Well, because because we all gotta have that that clarity moment. Like, okay, the people I'm around, how did I get around them? Right? Yeah. Right. Now, and we've all spent the time around people we dislike. It's just you know, it's not it's not it's nothing that you can. Yeah, I think it's part of the the experience of growing as a you got to but but to move past that, you got to ask yourself, how did I get here? And and almost certainly, you end up around people. When, whenever you end up around people you don't vibe with, it's for one of of two reasons, both of which uh, necessitate a response on your part. It's either because they're living a a more disciplined life and you are a mess, and so I don't know how you end up in there. Or a lot of times it's vice versa. And this is why we hear a lot of stories about guys who go, oh, man, I had to leave my boys behind. It just wasn't, uh, we weren't right. Bob anymore. But, but either way, you can, you know, now whether you ended up with these people because they were your lifelong friends or some people you just happen to cross paths with, uh, it's relevant. What is relevant is recognizing that eventually there's going to be a, a rift. And a lot of times that rift can be manifested or rather uh, poor communication is a proxy indicator of other issues and and that, right. that direct communication you you can only be direct when you can bear what happens when you're direct like when you ain't got shit going right. on you can't really be direct because you don't want someone to call you when you when you when you front right is right. oh yeah but but when you when you're the real deal and and you don't exaggerate but you're also living a life that people can admire or you're attempting to, you can be direct because you don't have anything to fear from the equal and opposite reaction. Right. Uh, th- totally agree. Totally agree. And that's one thing that we also, I've seen you speak on it uh, as well, but I'm, I'm big with it is, is authenticity. You got to be mm-hmm. authentic. And, and the way that you're authentic at, at something is, is you've lived it. You've put time and effort into it. It's, it's what, it's what you walk or like you said, you're trying to be, but it's something that, that comes from you. It, just because you show up and you say, um, Hey, I'm the alpha guy. That don't mean shit. That's just you talking to you or somebody, you know, Hey, I'm, I'm the, um, I'm the style guy. You know what I mean? Like unless, or, or something, you know, like just, okay, well says who says you, you know, the way that you are right. able to prove <laughs> that, you know what I mean? The way that you're able to prove that is by, the background, the history, and and what you've lived up to that point. I mean, that's where authenticity really comes in, you know, uh, not Absolutely. just saying something. Yeah. And, it's, and you it, know, and, what were you going to say? Go ahead. Oh. No, no, go well, ahead. Well, the, there's a lot of, there's a lot of these, 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 you call them kids. I mean, and that's weird because yeah. I don't, I don't feel old at 34, but I suppose right. that means there's a whole bunch of people on social media that were born when I was graduating from high school that I'm probably interacting with. And that's crazy to me. Uh, <laughs> but, but yeah, there's, there's a bunch of kids uh, who 
who want to be known. They want to be, they want to mm -hmm. have a name. They want to, hey, how can I right. do what you do? You know, how can I build a personal brand? I'm like, well, for starters, go do some shit. Like, like go do a yeah. thing and, and build up that authentic part of you, build up something that makes you unique uh, to everyone. And, and it, it doesn't have to be particularly challenging, but, but there are kids, you know, it's crazy. Uh, one of one of my favorite debates, you know, the should you go to college debate. And, and the short yeah. answer is, you know, look, man, some of y'all shouldn't go. Uh, some yeah. of you should, but no, no matter what you do, no matter what you do, I think back to something that got me eventually into the boxing gym. And then that, that advice led me to do other things. I used to argue against college the same way. The difference is there was no internet or rather no Twitter when I was doing it. I was doing it in the house of my, uh, my girlfriend at the time and her mother was yeah. a professor at uh, college. Uh, and okay. so one day she goes, okay, let's pretend you're right. What have you done for four years? And that was like a burn because I hadn't done shit, man. Yeah. So, yeah. And, and, and then from that day on, I said, I'm never going to be in a position where I don't have uh, some proof that I've been alive, you know, because, yeah. because I think about it. If I was doing the same things uh, now that I was doing at 24, people were like, what the fuck? Who, who is this? Like, that would yeah. not work. At some point, you yeah. need proof that you've lived and that and and then you can be authentic until then look no Man. one's saying you know this is why i'm not a big fan of faking until you make it how about you just put your head down be humble uh do the work learn you know whatever insights you have share them you know but Right. But no one, but you ain't got to really fake nothing, man. Because, because look, at, at a certain point, there, there are certain points where no one expects you to have anything. And then if you fake it, let's say you got, they're, they're going to be like, okay, why are you doing this? And, and, and right. no matter what, right, let's, let's say you fake it where you're at a point where people do expect you, well, you're going to have to show your receipts one way or the other. Like, like imagine right. me, like, like, you know, I'm, I'm, I, I never talk about money online. Like I almost say never, right. but very rarely. Right. That's cause I'm, I'm not, sure. I'm not a rich guy. I think like, like now in terms of like the percentages and I uh, wearing this through. Yeah. I think, I think I'm like a top 2% or something like that earner oh, in America, but that's not right. really rich. That's just, you know, that's more than six right. figures. Well, but imagine if I was sitting there talking about balling and I got pictures of a rented Lambo and all this crazy shit, right? Yeah, like, right, right. The, um, eventually somebody like somebody like Andrew Tate is going to show up and it's going to yeah. be like, bro, you really like, you got to come and see and hang out. Oh, man, you know, I can't get out this week, you know, because because I can't right, afford right, a right. ticket. I know I can't say that. I can come up with something else. But eventually, you know, you, you get exposed for no matter what you say. Or, or even worse, I think this is hilarious. I give this example all the time. Mm -hmm. If I was talking about fitness, and and or, or just, just me at Latin, or the guy who talks about, you know, uh, sobriety, and I show up to the 21 con, and I'm like, all right, guys, let's do some shots to kick this thing off. People would be like, yeah. what the fuck? Like, like, it yeah, would be yeah. It'd be confusing yeah. because on the one hand, they'd be like, oh, I get to drink with that ladder. And they're like, I get to drink with that That's not right at all. You know? Yeah. So so what, whatever you are, uh, you be that, but always get better. And you should all you if you do that and you you know you don't care about what people say, you just you know, just do the work, put your head down, whatever. You should never yeah. be in a position where you get where you have to bullshit. You're afraid of the direct talk. Well the well the way that that you gain real confidence too is through experience. And that's also how you're gonna gain your authenticity. So and, and that type of confidence and I've said this before on the show so people that normally watch are going to probably be like oh my god here we go again but that <laughs> confidence works either way you know uh so it can be the good type of confidence to where you're living your life in the right way and or you're doing a a thing a skill that uh has built you experience and so you know like when you go to do that skill it's just like second nature you know and you have that type of confidence but there's also the bad type of confidence to where like uh, dudes that go into prison, right? 
or dudes that, that go into this gladiator school. Now they, they ain't afraid to throw punches on somebody. Right. Now they really know how to scam somebody. So those guys get out and then they're out walking on the streets, you know, and then like normal victim type, you know, they find one of them people and it's just boop because they have that confidence to do that. So the confidence and the, and the experience and the authenticity in itself is actually neutral. I mean, it's just what you decide to do with, with your life, you know, and ultimately when you said something about being in the same spot and, and, and not having anything to show for yourself that you've actually lived life, I can relate to that. Cause when I went in, I just turned 23, but up from 23, from when I had graduated high school, you know, five years or whatever, I hadn't done shit. I really hadn't. You know, I was just barely, barely scraping by. So when I went in there and experienced that and came to the, my own conclusion or epiphany that, no, I wasn't going to live my life anymore, I realized that ultimately what everything comes down to is, are you going to be a good guy or are you going to be a bad guy? Like, are you going to be the guy that's real with this shit or are you going to be the hypocrite? Are you going to be the guy that is honest with his word or are you going to be the guy that's just a fucking liar? You, you know what I mean? Like, right. like so, so it's just, are you going to be, because when I say that, when I say it's a good guy or a bad guy, people think of a Disney movie, you know, like whether <laughs> you're the guy with the knight or you're the, you know, the, the, the dragon, you know, and that's yeah. not what I'm talking about. I'm just talking about, there are certain attributes, whether you want to call them honor, integrity, uh, but that are universal across the board, which are like, you know, you give somebody their basic respect of, of life. Uh, you know, you give them that the same kind of respect, like, like, like the golden rule, you know, treat others how you want to be treated that you, and there's basic things like that. Like if I tell you, Hey man, um, you know, I'll, I'll see you, I'll give you this money on Wednesday and Wednesday comes and, and I'm not there and I don't show up. Right. I don't care what culture you're in. That's no good. You know, nobody likes that shit. You know what I mean? I don't care if you're <laughs> Chinese or, or if you're African or, or if you're Italian, you know, whatever the fuck. And, and so there are these certain things to where, well, are you going to be good? Are you going to be good for it? Or are you just going to keep being a piece of shit? Because when I got out, I, I had a plan and did my thing, but I, I couldn't help myself, man. I wanted to check in on a couple homeboys you know that i knew from, <laughs> from before no i did i yeah. just want because because you know i was all big now too like i was a lot bigger than when i went in so it was like i was almost kind of showing off to you know like show these motherfuckers right now you know yeah and i i went to dude's house it was exactly the same i i you know his mom he's living with his mom still you know and he's like oh she's upstairs or he's upstairs in his room you know go upstairs same fucking posters on the wall same it was like stepping into like a time warp Wow. Like nothing had happened for this dude. It was like 10 years later, man. So it was good that I went because it was a motivator because I was like, oh, fuck no. Look at this. You know, you see it and you're just like, no way, man. I I'm making something for myself. Absolute, you know, and I think, man, that's terrifying. To see yeah. That kind of thing. And I think that the drive is stronger. You could, you could probably expound on this, but when you do have to really work through something to come up, there's this almost unstoppable drive once you get it to where you're like, nah, I'm going to win. Right. Because, you know, what, what ends up happening, people, see, see, a lot of people, some people know this, the ones who've been following me uh, from the beginning, um, a lot of the major changes, a lot of that stuff I talked about, you know, you know, who's at Lattimore at the beginning, I did all of that stuff at the same amount as the growing up in the hood thing. I did all of that at the same time. So there was a period yeah. from 2013, right when mm. I get sober. So yeah, the end of 2013 or middle of it, because I enlisted uh, or went to basic June 4th, uh, 2013 to, to 2017, where it was just, you know what it was like? It was like a freaking hurricane, the strongest winds, the, the eye of the storm was like mm -hmm. the end of 2014 into the beginning of 2016. And I, you know, when I say that, I'm sitting there, uh, I'm, I'm writing and I'm building a site because the site's been up and, and thank goodness I kept what it in wrote and put articles out. Um, 
I'm in school for physics. Not and not not a slouch degree. I'm doing 17 credits a clip. I still have to actually do a little bit of a job at some point uh, because until I get oh, wow. paid from boxing. And then I have an internship. And then I'm still boxing pro. And then I'm still trying to be a good guy at home to the, to the girl that I think is worth it. I, I, mean, I still think it at this point. Now I'm like, obviously, right. uh, for sure I'm here. But like, all of this is going on, and I remember, and, you know, I think back to that time period, especially 2016, that year, and I go, how in the hell did I, I make it through all that? And, and not just con yeah. to make it through. I mean, obviously, I think I could have been a better fighter if I wasn't in school. I could have been a better student if I wasn't fighting. could have been a better soldier if I wasn't doing either, right? All this stuff, right? But but I make it through all of that uh, but because mm-hmm. I had decided that, uh, what I was was ne- like I wanted to get as far away from it as right. possible. Right. I needed to be someone different, you know, because right. I felt like I wasted so much time. And it was like, you know what, what this is going to be. And, and you know what's crazy, man, in four years, I mean, that's a f- mm-hmm. four or five years. Life looks, I mean, nothing like like it looked um when I was right. when I was twenty, twenty seven, twenty eight, right? P you know, I, I get people messaging me all the time from uh from high school. Someone just messaged me the other day. I hadn't seen them almost twenty well no, it's not that long, almost fifteen years. Uh and was wow. like, man, it seems like everything is going really well for you. You know, how's everything going? It's at our house being over you know, people randomly check in because because now it went from being somebody that was literally just gonna wash out and disappear to like now people uh, the reason why the person reached out to me is they had seen me retweeted by like <laughs> some some big account that they some celebrity yeah. uh, that they follow or whatever. And they're like, oh, you know, everything seems like it's going well. And, and that was never the goal, dude. When I went back to school, the goal was just to like yeah. have a job that was not nine dollars an hour. Like that, I'm like, I was like, yeah. yo, I am 27. I'm making nine twenty eight an hour. This cannot continue was like my thought process uh yeah being at this point you know obviously my man obviously i've always always in my dream to like be able to look up my my thing and see the beach and like now i can do that yeah yeah. but like yeah uh, that was always like the dream but i never (laughs) yeah Uh, Yeah. i I didn't know i'd make it i just wanted to like get a little ahead you know uh so Mm -hmm. so when you when you go do things uh to improve and change and grow <coughs> that and it is you just yeah it was a little bit and then you just keep gaining momentum and you just keep getting and getting and getting into the point where i was like you know i, I could do it if i had to for another year whatever right uh cause, because what wasn't acceptable was going back to what i was <laughs> right right and that was that was when i had my uh, epiphany I wrote about this. There's a story on my website for those of you that haven't seen it. It's called De Profundis. And it was when I told the whites, the woods. Oh, yeah. Right, it's a great that story. I, that, I wasn't <laughs> gonna, that I wasn't going to run with them anymore. And that was, but just so you can relate because of what you were saying, I had come to this epiphany that I was just at a point to where either I was going to die or I was going to start being a good guy. Like I was either going to die in here, I was going to you know right. get whatever or i was gonna start being a, or, or or i was just gonna start being a good guy and for me it was so serious and i was so fed up with myself for allowing what had happened up to that point to happen that i was almost suicidal and and what i mean by not suicidal where i was gonna kill myself but where i was just like i'm gonna tell these dudes and if they don't fucking like it well then you know what it's either now or later so let's just get it done now Like I I was at the point in my head to where I was just like, you know, I mean, to where even I remember the guy, now I change all the names, but the guy that I call Keith in the story that, that was the the shot caller, he even said it. He he was like, what are you trying to fucking kill yourself? Like, what are you doing? You know, like he was at the time, like, like, man, like, and uh, it, it was just coming from where we have, I was just like, I'm not going back and I'm not staying this. Like I'm, I'm changing. This is it. You know, even though I was still in there, I was just like, this is, this is done, you know? And I believe so strongly in that, like I was willing to die for it. Like at that point, you know what I mean? You know, I, that's the, the the people, man, I, I wish that everyone 
uh, could experience that. Uh, but you know what's funny? I think about yeah. this sometimes because I got a few friends that they I mean they're solid gods, but, but in terms of of making the moves and the changes that need to happen and really having that far, uh, it hasn't happened. I don't know if it ever will, but it hasn't happened yet. And I think about this. I think, okay, how bad does it have to get before a person yeah. goes, okay, this is it. I'm either going right. left. Or I'm going out. I'm not right. going right anymore. Like I'm, I'm done with that right. direction. And I wonder if, if everyone has that kind of that same reaction. It, it, I don't know if they do necessarily. Uh, yeah. But, but the few, the few that do, you know, that the, we be the leaders. Because you know what, you know what it is too. This is on a on a tangent. Life is so mm-hmm. comfortable. It's so yeah. comfortable. It's so familiar. That because, because think about what you did, right? I mean, this didn't, it, it's, it actually happened. Mm-hmm. But it is a strong metaphor for everything else. It would have been much easier for you to just mm-hmm. keep rolling with the guys, buying your time until you got out, and then making a change mm-hmm. kind of on some, some side shit, right? And, you right. Know, but you you did but, it in the yeah. fastest and and most difficult way, and not necessarily you chose it because it was difficult. It just happened to be that to get time to start being right, it was going to be hard because you're still in the I middle of the lines. Then you basically telling the lines, "Yo, fuck y'all, I ain't being in line no more." Like, right? <laughs> and and well, what my, it was. my point, my point, it, it wasn't the the difficulty that I was thinking of so much, although I recognized that there was great danger in doing such, like I was ready for it when I went over there to that meeting, you know, to happen. But it was like, we were, we were talking earlier being direct. Like I didn't want all these fools like gossiping and do, 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 do. I wanted them all to hear from my fucking mouth, looking at my right. eyes, like, this is what's up. You know, that's it. Like, so that was my whole thing with that was it was just, I wanted to take the most direct route possible. Like just put it out there, boom, boom. It's it's fast, it's easy, it's done. Either it's gonna happen right now or it ain't never gonna fucking happen. You, you know what I mean? Like that right. type of stuff. And, and I believe in communication, like we were talking about earlier, that's just the best way to go. Um, you're right though. I could have, I, I, and I could have just, you know, did the whole, I'm gonna bide my time until the time is right. And it would have been a lot easier. But the thing was, is that I, I would have um, just been being a hypocrite to myself. Right. You, you, you know what I mean? Like maybe nobody else would know, but I'd know. And like that, I, I just. Yeah, at some I point, just you, know, a, you, you just get your own little, you, you I wonder what, what causes people to have these moments where they, where they wake up and they just see everything differently and they look at it all differently and they go okay i can't like like, i I, oh yeah yeah you know i I had had what i mean though was there like a specific day because that's what you just said is exactly how it happened for me i literally woke up one day and saw every fucking thing different don't get me wrong i've been reading like self-help books and doing other shit along way but there was a day that i was like I woke up and was just like, nope. And it was like the, I call it my epiphany because it was like the light shunned down from heaven and I just had knowledge and was just like, no more. Was, did you experience something similar I had, to that? I had two moments like that uh, in, in the year 20, 2013, right? That's when it would have been, 2013. Mm-hmm. I had two moments like that. Uh, the first moment was when I decided that I was going to, that I was not going to, you know, work any more shit jobs and like really start getting going towards something serious instead of, because pretty much what I was doing is I was, I was bullshit. Oh, am I still here? Awesome. No, no, pretty, sorry. My, for some reason, the mail just, <laughs> I'm going to have to mark where this was at and tell Tiger, for some reason, the mail just opened on my thing right in the middle of this while it's recording, so. I don't know. Oh, that, that's crazy. <laughs> but yeah. I'm Go sure it'll love it either way. But but yeah, yeah. Um. So so there was the the one moment where I was uh where I was like, you know what? I need to give myself more options in life. That I'm living like like a loser, and and I don't like it. And and that was very clear. I remember I was working at T-Mobile, and somebody came in 
if the store closed at nine, they came at like eight fifty, and we can't kick them out. But I was like, I'm gonna at least get some commission. I had some place to be, and uh, but they 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 stuck around for almost an hour and didn't buy anything, and I was so angry. I was like. I feel like somebody's slave and I can't do any better. I'm only surviving because my boys let me live at this crib for $200 a month. I was like, this ain't going to work. And I got, I got fed up. I was like, how did I let it get this bad? Like, how did I, how do I have nothing? No, no, granted, I, I was putting a lot of time on the boxing, but that was, there was no excuse either way. Uh, Cause I had zero and I was still concerned with drinking heavy and all that. Uh, and, and then uh, that, that's not the biggest one though, but, but that was kind of, that's what kind of put things in motion. The big one, though, was was December, the morning of the 23rd, or December 23rd. I, I woke up. I didn't know how I got to my boy's house. Uh, I was, I had been drinking hard there and before. I had, it was like my second night home from uh, AIT, where, where I finished all my army training. And I said, right. uh, Look at look at this. You you took an unnecessary risk, and and for what? Uh, you clearly have an issue. You got everything going for you. I had just I was I was back in school. I was committed to that. Uh, I had just now I'm in the army, so I'm subject to the UCMJ, the Uniform Code of Military Justice. Right. I had just I had just really started getting serious with Anna, and I don't want to mess that up. And my boxing career. And I sat there and I thought about all the things that I had kind of failed at before. And like, uh-huh. and and why I couldn't stick to things, and what cost me energy and time and trouble in my personal life and all that, and it all came back to alcohol. And I said, you know what, dude? Uh, if if, if <laughs> let me let me find out if I'm a, if I'm an asshole. Let me find out if I'm a terrible person. Let me let because I don't know because I've been drinking hard for most of my twenties to the point where I'm making some pretty stupid decisions. I used to say, right. uh, my life, you know, ninety ninety five percent of my problems or either caused or exacerbated by alcohol. And I, I meant that, and it was true. Uh, which is why I yeah. say I haven't had a bad day in, in almost six years. How could I? You know, right. I'm in control of everything. But that that yeah. day, that morning, I woke up, I texted all my friends. I said, I'm done drinking. Like, I mean, I texted everyone to an AM yeah. meeting, and then I texted all of them. I said, uh, there were six guys in particular. I said, I'm done. Uh, not not drinking anymore. This is it for me. Uh, you know, I get it if y'all don't want to kick me no more. But if you do, just let you know this how it's gonna be, and, and almost there. Thank goodness, I got some great friends. Um, the ones that, that stuck by me through my whole life that I know since I was fourteen right. when I transferred from high school, they were all like, "Yeah, cool, man." Hey, but you know what's funny yeah. about that? Uh, I, I wrote about this in, in my book about sobriety. Uh, <laughs> I, I remember I had a moment. I had a moment like two years prior where I realized I'm having an issue, and I brought it up to all my friends, and he was like. Are you sure? You know, you know, AA is like forever, man. Like basically, talk me out. Of here, <laughs> yeah, right? and, like, and, and, uh, and 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 I'm just like, dude. Uh, part of me gets angry about it, but then I go, I can't be mad because because everybody, but because, because for because I'm not like everyone else. Clearly, uh, yeah. I not only did I have a worse relationship, but my tolerance and feeling for it that's different. I'm just a different person and so you know i think that's what stops a lot of people is they have that shame but i you know once i once i got past that shame i was like dude what am i i said okay i'm gonna turn i used to say that i said i'm gonna turn 33 that's just the the number i used randomly i always used to Mm -hmm. say it i said i'm gonna turn 33 one day regardless god willing right am i gonna be 33 with more options or fewer options and here i am with way more (laughs) options right uh in my life because of, because of hard decisions I made, and I know they were hard because I watched some other people around and they didn't make them, and they needed to make them just as badly. Well, I'll tell you what: hard decisions, uh, everything's relative, right? So you you had this this relationship with alcohol that was no good, and for me, mine was the relationship with with my family, and and with different people that I was around there to where I had to. Just like you cut alcohol out of your life, I had to cut my family out of my life. You know, I had to, st- I had to, yeah. I even moved to Northern California just so there wouldn't be any excuse for people to just randomly show up or anything, you know, bullshit like that. Right. And uh, the thing is, when you do cut those negatives out of your life, just like you said, everything just starts getting better and there's more options oh, and there's more this and there's more that. 
Yeah, man, for sure. And for those of you that are watching, you hear it from me, you hear it from Ed, you see it all over the timelines. If you've got those negative aspects in your life, cut them out. That's that's a big part of what's holding you back right there, if not it the is. biggest part. <laughs> <laughs> you, know? you know, like we like we were saying with communication, simple communication carries a burden. Uh, and, and the hardest decisions are the simplest decisions. Simplicity is, is right. very difficult. It, it is yeah. way, it's way easier to bullshit yourself and say, I can handle this or I can deal with that or, you know, give us some time. The hardest part is really, like, you know what? you you're done you're out like you gotta go yeah. you know because at some right. point at some point you know I don't, I don't know when it happened um probably sometime in the last five years because i know i didn't have this kind of resolve about my life beforehand but but something happened uh where where i was like okay uh my integrity and who i am and how i see myself that is supreme nothing uh can compromise that so if if I see or hear or or it comes to my attention that I am uh, in, in uh, uh, involved in something that that puts me in a place, I have to be able to go. Okay, that's done. You're done. You're done. Got to leave you. You know, and, and just like that. No, you know, if they want an explanation, give it. Uh, if not, not. But to be able to just be like, yo. We're done. This is it. This is over. Right. Uh, that's hard. Like cutting some out yeah. is hard. You're used to it. You you don't even know what you're gonna fill it with yet. But a lot of yeah. times, sometimes you just gotta fucking cut the cut the limb off, man. You just gotta... right. <laughs> that, that, like that, you said, that, that limit. Yeah. You no, know, the simplicity being like you know like hard, right? I often mm-hmm. one of the things I've often put up on on my social media is it's not the complexity of a thing. It's your willingness to do it. It's your right. willingness to participate. You know, a lot of stuff, a lot of the greatest answers that you're going to have in your life, the, the greatest uh, just resolve and, and, and success and, and anything you're going to enjoy isn't going to come from some complex uh, math equation or whatever. The, the, right. the answers are very easy. It's just very direct. It's just whether you are willing to do it or not. Yeah, it's it's like, um, you know what it's like. It's like when you when you find out uh, like how to lose weight, right? Yeah, <laughs> lose lose losing weight is easy. Like like it is it is astounding that we have this huge industry for weight loss and diet pills, but it is so simple. Burn more calories, fewer calories in, you know, then 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 fewer calories out, and and or yeah. fewer calories out and in, and you yeah. you 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 it'll burn. Or it's like you know, if you want to be attractive, just a, a a little more, a little more complex, but really just more simple parts. Make sure you're not broke, be in shape, talk to your, like, and then there's something else right. challenging talk to girls that there's no magic like what do i say what do i do on this just talk man vincent you it's amazing what you'll figure it out uh if yeah. you just talk her through but but all of these things uh like creating making money you know the the best part about being involved as a creator is you really get to see making money is is simple what's challenging for many people is finding that time devoting it, putting it in, but it's it's all yeah. very simple. The the main ideas are super simple and the execution is, is usually just as simple at the most basic level that it'll put you ahead of like eighty percent of people. Right. But we want a complicated answer. We we want to hear something that makes us mm-hmm. feel good. We want to hear something right. that gives us an out in case it doesn't work. If I tell you like if I tell somebody who's overweight, I tell them but just eat a bunch of chicken breast. Just just eat chicken breast. Chicken breast right. and broccoli and drink water and do that for sixty days. You ain't even gotta go to the gym, dude. Just drink chicken eat, drink water and eat chicken breast. You're like, that's it? Like, dude, I'm telling you, it, I, yeah. it so it'll work. But but look at right. how simple that is. <laughs> you yeah. know? No, it, it is. People um 
I get I get DMs that will say like, how do I get bigger or how do I look bigger or how do I do whatever? And it's like, man, you work out, you lift weights. Like if you wanna, it's it's very, how do I lose weight, you know, with women or whatever? You work out, you, you, you can lift weights, you can go uh, do some cardio, go do whatever. But um, the, the, the answers to these questions are so easy. They're just so, uh, it, it's very direct, like you were saying earlier, but it's just whether you want to participate or not. And that's what ultimately everything comes down to is people will talk themselves out of doing things. It, you want to be ahead of 90% of the world, show up. Yes, show up. man, most, that is Most it. people don't even show up. <laughs> and people, saying, people I mean, take that yeah. quote out of context, but it really dude, is that simple. Uh, to show up right. and, and just do some damn work. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's, it's cliched crazy. as it's, it sounds. <laughs> that's it. Let me ask you something. I want to, uh, just, just because I want to, uh, something after knowing you and talking, talking with you, and like you said, we've hung out, we've had the opportunity to hang out a few times. Why physics? Okay. And, <laughs> and with the physics, did you, were, did you lean more towards like the experimental side or the theoretical side? Like, like where, what, why and where were you going with that? Okay. So, so why physics? There's a cool story behind this. So when I went okay. back, when I decided I was going to go back to school, the original goal was mathematics. Now, why did I choose mathematics? Because I'm terrible at math. I got a whole thing where I wrote about how, how I was, like, terrified of, of doing math. But I said if I'm going to go back to school, I looked at all the, the highest paying jobs and the jobs with the, the, the highest is satisfaction, and they all had math involved. So I said, okay, right. if I'm going to do this, I'm going to invest this time and this money. Uh, it's going to be for, for something I'm going to get an ROI out of and a decent one. Okay. Right. So it was originally going to be math. And plus, uh, I, I anticipated having to work, so I wanted to stay away from the sciences uh, mm -hmm. because I was going to need to have lab work, and I knew that, and I was afraid of labs, too. I didn't want to do that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So here we go. So the, that was the goal. We're going to do math. Well, I go and I enlist, and I go through, uh, when I get to AIT, my advanced individual training my MOS is a 94 alpha 94 alpha is a bit of a mouthful it is a land combat and electrical systems uh, repairer I had to I had okay. to learn how to work on on a bunch of general um, military weapons the javelin the Ates, the um, I can't even remember all these things now but but ultimately when I got to my unit because it was a National Guard unit they, they put me to work working on the electronics of the uh, the, the, the MTBs and all that Right. So right. I go to a, I go to uh, AIT, though, and, and the part of AIT is a six week course of uh, BMAT, basic mechanical and electronic theory. They just want to make sure you know how shit works. And I'm doing this. Okay. And I go, Yo, this, this is pretty cool. I think I want to be an electrical engineer. So that's what I go back and I start doing. And as part of, the, of all engineers, we all have to take a, a two semester sequence of calculus, chemistry and physics. So I go and yeah. I do this and I take my physics and we do an experiment uh, for projectile motion, which is things that are moving under no other force, but the initial velocity and gravity. Gotcha. And, right. and my, my pellets landed where I said they were going to land. And I was like, yo, that's like magic. Now I can see how wars were like fought back with trebuchets. That's crazy. Yeah. And so I said, I want to study physics. But I wanted to do both. So the school I actually ended up going to had a program where I was able to do electrical engineering and physics. And then oh, I wow. think it was like three, three and a half years in, I um I started making money online, and I I realized that my strength really is writing. But I didn't think there was any way to kind of monetize that. Plus, being a being a good writer is kind of like. So it's a secondary skill. Like, like if, if no one cares about my writing, if I don't have something else to stand behind, like a life. So I go. I need to go right. get some skills. Uh, so uh, I'm really happy now that I didn't like lean into writing, and I, instead I went and, like got real critical thinking, and then I had to learn how to write reports and do research on physics. Really helped me become an even better writer. But but that's how that yeah. happened. So I'm 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 like I'm like three. Uh, 
three and a half years, three years ish into my degree, it's a five year program. Uh, then I said, you know what, I want to get out there and get done. So I, I dropped the electrical engineering and stuck with physics and then graduated. And, and really oh, wow. want to talk about, you want to talk about like things that save you. When I lost my fight on TV, I lost all of my money. Like it, then I wasn't oh, even sure. making that much. But they, but, I, but by the time I got home, Oklahoma, I had a, a an express letter saying that I was cut. So I had no way to feed myself, oh, wow. no way to pay. And then no one would hire me because I took that semester off to train, but I missed the uh, the deadline to kind of look for an internship. So I'm like, okay, I want to finish my degree, but I need to make enough money to live. I'm in this weird dilemma. And don't you know, yeah. talk about talk about people, you know, my coach, his wife was a counselor at a, at a high school uh, in a fairly affluent district. And and Tom, and my coach, he's like, uh, what are you doing for money now? I'm like, man, because I, I found some website to tutor on. And he, and I'm like, what are they paying you? I'm like, man, it's like $17 an hour. But but it was like real intermittent work. I'm talking like four right. hours a week, maybe. He goes, let me yeah, talk yeah. to my wife. Let me talk to my wife. And you know what she says? She goes, yeah, you know, if, if he can if he can tutor, that's great. But we really don't need any more like history of reading. If he can do math or, or science, that's great. And I'm like, that's all I can do. Let me yeah. tell you how much, like, that saved me. I was able to go to school. Yeah. I was able to charge eventually $50 an hour. So I only need to work, wow. like, like two to six hours a week. But, 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 but the man was so great because people with my skill set, they usually have jobs and they're out. So, I mean, I was, I, I was turning downward. Um, I ended up, I was oh, only wow. going to do it for one, one year. I ended up doing it for three because, because it was just so rewarding and, and you know, it kind of paid well. First, first year I needed it. Second year was nice. Third year, I was just like, I'm not taking you on because you're a headache, but I like you. So I'll work with you for less, <laughs> and, you know, that kind of yeah. thing. But, but yeah, so that, that, that dude, it saved me. Talk about like doing stuff. You can't see yeah. the future. If I had continued along my trajectory, but I did not have the background. Uh, and the skills yeah. that I had. When I lost, I would have been out of money, but instead I would have been driving trucks and delivering packages or something like that. Instead of yeah, having yeah, a yeah. nice, awesome job where I met, I met a lot of nice people that I'm still friends with today. And <laughs> and it really just yeah. is working. As far as where I leaned, um, I was, you know, I, I, just, I really liked the physical phenomena. That's what really drew me, drew me to it. I didn't know that physics basically covers everything. Like, I mean, everything. Like, I have a math minor now. I'm like two credits away from a chemistry minor. Uh, oh, wow. A lot of like all kinds of electronic theory. And this is just standard. Like, yeah. if I had finished my, my finished my electrical engineering degree, I would have had the full math, the full chem, all these things. No, you end up learning quite a bit of science and math just because you need it. And and then yeah. I had I did a lot of writing. I ended up taking four philosophy classes, which which probably helps oh, wow. a lot of my thinking. So so yeah, it was it was one of those was one of those things. And, and you know, becoming an educated really just just changed you. <laughs> um, yeah. Because I was I'm I've always been a, a smart guy, but in terms of like why I'm now compared to what I had four years ago, the difference is I don't like physics is one of those things where you learn how to think. It's not just memorizing facts. Like sports users, like no, I mean I can go do quite literally anything that doesn't require a professional degree because of how they train me. I, programming has to do all kinds of programming. I, I think I took yeah. yeah, I have to write a bunch of programs because a lot of that stuff you can't do by hand, so you got to write a program to do it. Uh, good, it was a good time. Really happy I did it. Uh, but the, yeah, that's how I started. That it was not an original interest in physics. It was math, and then it just. Yeah, yeah. It's... <laughs> no, but everything turned out for a reason. That's that's what I tell people too, and they and they think it sounds like new age or or hippie or you know whichever. And I'm really not making it like that, but I I firmly believe that things happen for a reason. That like in the grand scheme of whatever, that you are where you're supposed to be, and things that either happen or don't happen, there's a reason behind that. And as long as you're doing what you're supposed to be doing for the good of your nature versus trying to steer your nature into some bad hinky shit, things will fall in line. You know, things, things happen um, and, and opportunities appear. And if you're on top of it, 
you're going to be able to snatch on that opportunity. So where do you see yourself in five years, 10 years from now? Like, what are okay. you going to be doing? The, 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 the five-year plan, that'll, that'll almost be 40 at that point. My birthday's in February, so effectively. Oh, God, uh, God forbid, 40, huh? <laughs> I'm excited. Okay, so so what, what do I have planned for? We, we were just talking about this. Um, <coughs> the, the big things that I want to accomplish that, you know, I, I'd like to have a kid. That, that's right mm. around that, that that time period. So yeah, I uh, like that. It's good kid. you waited. Uh, I recommend that because I, I had one when I was, uh, oh, shoot, he was born when I was 18. I only turned nine or no, excuse me, 19, excuse me. But um, I had my, my daughter uh, was 34, I believe, yeah. 33 or 34. And I think that waiting, like how you do it, from from a parent aspect, I'm much, and it sucks to say, you know, because it's my kid. The other, they're both my kids, but I'm much more involved and focused and do the well, right you thing can be now, you know? right? Versus when, oh yeah, because if if I had if I had done a kid, you know, early, I mean, there's no way I would have been able. My my life was not at a point, and then then I got to make a choice: do I get my life better and not raise the kid, or do I raise the kid and not get my life better? And I really don't right. want to make that decision because I, because I, I, you know, the the thing I was going to, I definitely said, I will not raise someone to raise out the way I was raised, no way, shape, or form, right. not even close to right. it. So, but yeah, th that that's one of the big things. Um, I'm pretty sure I've made up my mind, and then uh, I, I want to go back. I want to study concussions and and traumatic brain injury. I think that's you know I originally was kind of interested in weather because I was like, what do I what do I want to learn next? What's the next thing I can contribute? And I go, okay, I I understand and know this and what it feels like, and and it's it's yeah. kind of interesting to me. And I now you know that's the cool thing with this degree is like quite literally any like like I. I, I can apply to a graduate, like a physics guy. Okay, let's some talk and be interested. So, uh, yeah, that's yeah. probably what I'm gonna do. Um, I'm working on on my more on some fiction, a few few pieces of fiction. That's really important to me. I've always wanted oh, cool. to write fiction. Uh, cool. Working on my um my chess game. Hopefully, I'll be a you know maybe be a chess master if I have the ability to. Who knows? And and just just continuing what I'm doing now, uh, which is which is writing, writing, communicating, and teaching. But, but I recognize something yeah. that I think a lot of people uh, don't want to recognize. You can, you can build a big, you, okay, you can build a following. I won't even say a big following. You can build a following uh, just, just popping out words, taking pretty pictures. But you can, but you only gain influence when what you put out is about something. And you're about something, right. you're someone, right? So, so I want, for me, you know, that's a game I play. I really enjoy having that influence. I, I like knowing that, yeah. like, I can get in my 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 DMs and people like you know DJT Junior or David Ayer or Scott Adams. You know, I can communicate mm -hmm. with those guys. And I'm not from that. You know, those are upper echelon guys. Yeah. Who am I? But but they they talk because because what I I have an influence, or rather influence mm -hmm. not influence like make them do things, but influence like people look at no, what I put out. What and you then, say you, means something. Yeah, and that that's responsibility, yeah. you know, to to be right. able to go and do it. So yeah, the dust was really you know interesting to me is just you know I think I'll focus on continue to build and help and and I'm fortunate someone once described it as uh you're you're likely going to accidentally become a millionaire, and it, because because I'm not the the guy that's say like, let's produce courses and always you know like the next thing I'm working on to produce is, is like I, I'll quit porn video or our webinar and stuff. I mean pretty much like like I'm fortunate enough that I have the the influence of kind of who I am to, to be who I am and I don't have to focus on on making money. I make I make more than enough for a single guy. Uh, it probably you know, if I had a few kids, you know, I was talking to Tanner Guzzi and I was like, dude you have five kids. Well, four. He wants five. Four kids. Yeah. You, it, it, you're completely self-employed and your wife doesn't work. Do you ever feel nervous? He's like, every day. <laughs> and he's like, that's yeah. great. Yeah. Uh, but, like, no, nah, that's um, that's pretty much it, the, a nutshell, man. I, I really do just see myself as kind of this, kind of this regular person. Uh, this yeah. has been blessed with a life that – uh, the blessed with a life and a, and a certain and a personality and a certain set of gifts that people can learn from because I'm good at teaching from it. 
You know, it, it really is, it, there's a responsibility behind when you write things that people are paying attention to, when you're trying to impart lessons, when you're trying to uh, impart life advice. For me, one of the crazy things about it is this is the first time ever, you know, being a writer, be having a following to where like, I wake up in the morning doing what I do. I go to sleep doing what I do and I love it. Like, I love it. You know, it's like, it's, I feel like it's like part of why I've never had anything else that that was what the case was, you know, everything else is just like, oh, I'm off work. My brain can just disconnect, you know? So the fact that I'm, that we're both able to do something like this, it's, yeah, there is like how Tanner said, you know, being nervous, but it's like a good way. Cause it's just like, you're the one making it happen. It's like, it's about you, you know, you're the, yeah. you're the shot caller, so to speak, you know, <laughs> so if, if you, if you had a superpower, what would it be, Ed? Oh, oh man, I, you know it'd be it's funny. I, I'd love to be immortal, dude. As weird as that sounds, <laughs> at, at the very least, yeah, to maybe heal like Wolverine. Uh, because, dude, I, yeah. I just I cannot see. And then what's funny? We actually talked about this in a uh, philosophy. I, I I can't see myself getting tired of living forever. You know, if I yeah. can look like this. If I can be like me. Now, if not, I'm old right. and decrepit. Nah, I kill my ass. Right, right, right. Like, if I'm going to be just like this, I, you ain't even got to re regress me back to my 20s, man. This is good. Like, if I can stay like right. this, wherever, yeah, we'll be in, be in a good good position. <laughs> <laughs> so so along the same line, since we're, since we're getting into theoretical stuff now. Now, uh, if, you, if you have the power to change anything, Okay, and, and, and it doesn't have necessarily have to be with you or your timeline. It could be just anything on the planet, right? If you had the power to change anything, what would it be? Uh, I would, I'd probably, I got to figure out a best way to phrase this. <laughs> I would make sure that, that people are forced to do research before they make a statement. <laughs> I think I, I can That's... think of nothing more divisive to our planet right now than people uh, react first and think later. I think that's yeah. um, and, and a lot of it, and then that you know that's become profitized. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, get, get monetized. I guess is the word. I mean, I guess along the, right. that same line. Uh, I guess the next thing is I would I would invent the perfect economic system that, like it's capitalistic, but but somehow <laughs> raises money uh, to to help people out because because I'm not naive I you know I understand that, that the more capitalistic you are the less socialistic you are like being in Portugal it's amazing how well the people are taken care of the difference is the tax is forty five percent and you probably right. don't want to own a car because of how expensive gas is. That that's the trade off, yeah. the free school and at the healthcare, you right. know. Right. So uh yeah. that uh, so that's the thing. You may maybe come up with like a perfect economic system. You know, that that that's really interesting. I didn't think about anything about myself, man. I I, I love me. I mean maybe be an instrument yeah. it'd be, be nice to be six and three proper. But like right. I, I'm not even six two for real. I'm like I'm like six one and cents and change. <laughs> oh, is it you know I I say I'm six four. I'm actually like six four and and like a half or three quarters or some shit. But it just sounds so pretentious to say that or like to round it up to six five. <laughs> right, like quite exactly. Like, I, so I I'm just like I'm six, six one and some. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I, yeah I tell I people I'm six, six two in the morning. That's what I say. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, and, and by the time we're old, we're gonna be you know a couple inches shorter. Um, do you see yourself living over in Europe or, or living over or living? you know, somewhere abroad, like permanently? Ooh, or, or is... Ah, man, you know, I'm an American, dude. And, and you don't realize what that, and dude, it's, it's, it, that's, that's a thing. It's a thing. You know, little little things, yeah. for example, uh, these coffees, man, I'm, I'm getting used to them. That's, I'm getting used to them. <laughs> but like when I cross the street, this is the new one. This is the new thing I'm getting used to. When I go to cross the street, uh, here, they expect the the pedestrians to just walk uh when there's a crosswalk and they slow down it doesn't look like they're going to slow down but they do and it happens every time and it's weird 
I still yeah. ain't adjusted to like like I haven't adjusted to that. You know, she she's European, like she she was European first when she was American. A lot of these things right. makes <laughs> make sense to her, and I'm just like, ah, nah. But but could I get, could I see myself living abroad? Uh, yeah, for sure. You know, but because it's all about talking and getting people are the same everywhere. I mean, there are little differences, and, and but fortunately, my hobbies are largely um what's the word i want non-local i guess i don't know like like i like okay. meeting people for chess going to the museum enjoying art learning language things of that nature all uh, right the sports I, I watched the joshua fight last night granted i had to like have my buddy cam uh zoom me in because Daz is not available in, in portugal yet and they got like super engineers to block the vpn but uh Whoa. Yeah, it, it, dude, it was, it was, dude, it, it blew my mind. And then we tried to, here's crazy, yeah. we tried to do it on Skype. The camera won't work on Skype. <laughs> so I'm like, these motherfuckers are crafty. So we, we yeah. figured out on Zoom, man. So that was, that was cool. Okay. But, um, no, I can see myself staying over here, staying, staying anywhere. I mean, I just, I'm really, I'm fortunate. This has always been a dream. I mean, I might, I might get tired of it in, in two weeks. Be like, okay. Well, let me ask you. Let me ask you this, because I, I I hadn't even really thought to to ask this, but from you talking about it and talking about the different experience, you know how you're just experiencing things differently because American is is really a thing. Okay, so with you being a brother, right? How was your experience in Europe different? Because we know, you know, we'd be <laughs> remiss, we'd just be full of shit if we didn't know that that you know. There is a thing with African Americans, and you know, there's different types of, of um, you know, little hidden racism. Yeah, little, like, little, like little people just that. Yeah, like just little bullshit, you know. But you know, it's there, and the people that that are doing it usually know it's there too. But uh, that here, America and its history, versus you just being a brother over in in Europe. Well, what, what's um, the difference? What's it like for you? So far. Is there a, so far, I haven't noticed anything, and uh, and you got to remember something too. Uh, only in America is there this concept of black people, right? Right. Um, a lot of the people over here, they're Africans, man. Like they, they're not, they're not. Okay. It's not. So, so there's a culture against that. But the minute they hear me speak English, they're like, oh, you know, it, it's a different kind right. of whatever. But, but, and that's if I encounter something like every day. Here's the thing about at least in Portugal, uh, everyone is so. It, it looks like. What did I say to Anna? I said the variance is high. Like there's just more, more variance along the skin tones. Like it's not so white black. Dude, it's it's very kind of kind of mixed in different cultures. And so I have I haven't encountered anything. But the first thing I encounter, sure, I'll, I'll be the first to be like, oh, and this happened today, and this was cool. But um, no, yeah. nothing, nothing crazy. Let me tell you this: when I was in Poland, no, no, I thought mm -hmm. Poland was religion because Poland is, is very homogenous. I mean, like. It's homogenous to the point where me and Steve the Dean, we were out at the mall and some guy was like, yo, y'all American? Another black dude. Because he was like, I ain't yeah. seen no black people around here in ages. I think there's right. like eight of us in the country. Uh, yeah, because, yeah. you know, <laughs> now, now, you know, I didn't get looks per se, but I think it was, I think that they heard me speak. Cam had a similar experience because right. he's been all over the world. Uh, once they heard me speak, they just assume I'm an American. And I, and I think that yeah. is the biggest difference that a broad uh, nationality trumps ethnicity. Oh, okay. Yeah, that you know what's funny about that? When I was in, a, I was a, at a layover in Germany when I was going to Romania, yeah. and I I heard some people speaking Italian next to me. Right? It was, and I look over, and it's this, it's this this man, you know, kind of smaller man. It's his wife, and they've got like a daughter that looked like she was probably around sixteen years old. Right. So I kind of like glanced down at this thing and he's, it's, it's an Italian passport, you know, cause I can, I can still read Italian, no problem. It's just my, my remembering how to speak it is a little chunky, you know? So, yeah. so he, um, you know, he's, he's talking or whatever and we're just standing there waiting in this long ass line. And so I see him looking at me and I look over and I go, and I tell him in Italian, I go, Oh, hi, you know, you're Italian. He says, see, I said, I, I'm Italian too. I just don't speak it that well. You know, I'm, I'm, but I'm saying it in Italian. And the very fucking first words out of his mouth were, Americano, like he's like, you're American. 
and it was like, God damn it, because like I wanted to, you know, like come across, <laughs> and not, like, like you know, like hey, my time yeah. to grow, you know what I mean? Like, what's happening, right? And he's just like, Oh, you're American, you know, and so it is. There's like this, there is this thing about nationality. You're, now, you're, now I dude, I'll, that. I'll, I'll tell you a story before I get out of here, though, on in that yeah, regard, yeah, yeah. though. Uh, on the other end, like two weeks before we came here, uh, we were in the Dominican Republic uh, at a resort. She, you know, because she does travel stuff and she got this great deal. So we went to a resort and uh, we're hanging out. We're just at the resort, you know, we're ordering, just living. And then uh, the waitress beckons to another guy and just calls him Negro. I'm like, and I'm like, black he just calls him like blacky black like that's just the thing right uh yeah and then so so she tells me she because she lived in africa for two and a half years but she's like yeah that's like a thing in other cultures but they just refer to you by your skin tone they used to call me i can't remember the word that she told me i was like yobo or something like that basically means like white yeah. person she's like they should just call me whitey 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 <laughs> and it's like yeah oh so so, so that, i, that's... I no, no, it's a, it's a trip, man. Like, like how the whole difference is. And I, I know you got to go. I don't, I don't want to keep you because I know oh, you no got stuff to do and it's like probably getting close to your bedtime before we're <laughs> on the side of your world that you're at. No, but <laughs> That's weird, I, man. I, uh, I know it's a trip. No, but similar to what you were saying, when I was in Romania, okay, we were all at, uh, at this, this club and there's this, um, there's this DJ and dancers and stuff, but we're sitting at this long table and they're all behind me, right? And I had scoped everything out when I came in and in Romania, pretty much everything's Romanian. They're all like white looking, you know? Um, and so we're going and this this DJ's uh, got the, you know, I'm sitting next to Andrew and they're behind us and this DJ's got some rap on or whatever. And all of a sudden on the mic, I just hear him, he starts singing along with it, but he's just dropping the N word, like every other word. And, along, and I was like this, dude, I was like, you know what I mean? I was like, oh no, like, like it's about to go down, you know, cause I'm like that American in me, right? And I'm yeah. like, Andrew, what the fuck, dude? And he's like, no, bro, they, they don't have that concept, like how, you know, right, the right. and the whatever. He, he's just singing along to the song, like it's just all good, you know, like, like, and I was just like, whoa, that tripped me out, man, because like, when he was, I thought it was going to kick off or something like that, you know, I was just like, oh, this dude's got a death wish, but no, it's just, it's weird how the cultures are and the nationalities are and, and everything like you're saying. Hey, Ed, I appreciate you joining. Um... Thank you. If I have to do it again, there... man, I really enjoy having, yeah. man. Yeah. Is is there is there anything you want to plug or anything that's coming up that that? Uh, oh no, nah, you know, know I do. I, ne I never know. What, I never know what's coming <laughs> up, man. Because half the time I just wake up and I'm I'm working on like six different things. So no, nah, just follow me on my website. Come sign up my newsletter. You know, all the links will be in the bottom of the, of the description. Yep. But I'm rubbing real simple to find on social media. Ed Lattimore.com. Ed Lattimore is my Twitter. Ed Lattimore is my Instagram. Uh, fortunately, whoever, I feel sorry for the next Ed Lattimore, man. I got them all. <laughs> yeah, you just put Ed Lattimore in Google. You'll find them every 10 which way. Yeah, that's, that's no, actually but, true. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I'm, yeah. Okay, well, thank you, Ed, for joining us. Thank all of you for uh, joining us at Handle Your Business with Bobby Dino. And until next time, stay safe out there. <laughs>